What's up, Cowboys Nation? Welcome back. Three days in a row to the late night hype. Midday party. Got a midday party today. Coming up, special guest in the building, Philip Tanner. I really think you're going to like this guy, man. If you don't know him already, you about to know him. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. Make sure y'all hit that like. Y'all subscribe and share. We're going to have fun today, man. Okay, okay. What's going on? Yeah, a little bit of energy, PT. That's what we like to do. We like to bring in a little bit of energy, man. Gotta have it. Gotta yeah, have man. it. We, never, we can't have no dull days, man. We've been no. running on fumes the last two weeks. Y'all been getting too much late night hype. Never too much. So now you're about to get another face full of it today with yes, a sir. great guest and Mr. Philip Tanner. Absolutely. How you doing today, big dog? Man, I'm great, man. Living life. Yes, sir. Hey, it's it's uh, really good that you spent took us some uh, time out your you know busy schedule. I know you're a busy guy right now. Um, you know, just to chop it up and you know talk some Cowboys football, some ongoing, some ingoing, some all kind of goings all going right now with the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let's just jump it off right. Let's just jump right into it. You know, you came in with the Cowboys uh, 2011, correct? As an yes, undrafted free agent. You were there from 2011 to 2013. Uh, you had tw- you was in there 2014 right quick, too, because yeah. I know they had the cuts and then you were at Buffalo and San Francisco. And then the last couple of years, you were there as assistant special teams coach. I just got to say this, though, before you go any further. I believe it was 2011, man, where you... When you Ray ran Lewis. without your helmet. No, no, no. I'm talking about <laughs> oh, I against talk about the Ray Chargers. <laughs> I was looking for, I wanted, to, I wanted to play it, but YouTube Illuminati be funny, so I couldn't play it. But <laughs> I'm just telling you, that play, even though it was, a pre, it was preseason, right? Yeah, it was preseason. I absolutely loved that play. What was going through your head before we go on with some of the serious questions? Because you was gone, Playboy. As soon as the helmet yeah, came was, off, you took I, off. 
I mean, it, it, it was get it out the mud. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and that's how I live my life, man. Right. Uh, by any means necessary. You know, I love uh, it. Nothing's going to stop me. So that, that wasn't going to stop the show. Period. I love it, man. It reminded me of Jason Witten. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that. Yeah, okay. I just want to bring that up, big game. Go ahead, fuck. Oh, no, you good, because I was going to bring up, before we jumped to anything about the Ray Lewis, because I was watching <laughs> that, because I remember that game, I remember when you got activated, and I was like, oh, yeah, Phil Taylor going to run that ball today. You feel me? And I think if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken, let me know. In the first in the first part of the game, you came through the middle, Ray hit you, and it was a big hit. Everybody was going off, Ray jumping up and down, wooty wooty woo. But guess what, Ray? <laughs> guess what, Ray? I see Philip come right through that line and blow up that arm, and he immediately was holding it. And when he was holding, he was walking off. And guess what? I see Philip over there talking to him. What you say to him, man? Oh, man, first, first of all, much respect to Ray, man. He's one, <laughs> he's one of the best to, to ever do it, you know. And, and we, we was going back and forth the whole right, game, right. you right. know. So after that play, man, when I seen him, he went down. And he was in the car, stood over. I like, don't check out on me five two. I said, don't leave me five two. <laughs> but the, the crazy, the crazy part about it, man, Ray got a TED talk, you know, and he, and he was talking about that on his TED talk. And he was like, yeah, a little running back. And he standing over, telling me not to leave. And he was like, wow, you know I'm gone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so yeah, you know, so uh, that was one of the greatest moments, man. And then ESPN had the picture, of it, so I still got the picture of me standing over Ray. Hey, look, uh, I got the highlight, so it's going to be running today, PT. Yeah. I got yeah, that, that highlight. highlight going running, because yeah. I, I ain't going there, because I remember when he was holding that army and walking over, I remember you shaking your head, and I see you talking to him like... Yeah, I told, I, I told, I told him, don't leave me. I said, don't leave me, five, two. Don't <laughs> check out on me. <laughs> love but it. Just, but respect to Ray Lewis, man. I want to yes, best ever do it. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. All right, man. Well, you like you said, you, you played with the Cowboys. You came in, actually, when Garrett came in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So... Those three years, right quick, because we're going to talk about all of it. But those three years, I mean, a lot of people were frustrated because, you know, he had the eight and eight, eight and eight. And everybody was talking about the December swoon, things of that nature. How was kind of your time in Dallas, the the culture, you know, just how how was your experience in Dallas, your playing days there? I think it was a it was a a a redefining, you know, it was a a Garrett and business culture. You know, he was just getting in, getting his feet wet. You know, so it was him just establishing his culture and what he wanted out of uh, the Dallas uh, football Cowboys. And just what he wanted from an organization standpoint, whether it was uh, the custodial staff, whether it was cafeteria staff, it was the player, the front office, uh, journalism, uh, media, blogging, whatever it was, it was just him putting his stamp on the entire organization as a whole. Okay, okay. Uh, now, do you, what, what's your kind of, what was your kind of initial thoughts? Because a lot of people, you know, that glad Garrett gone, 10 years of up and down, inconsistency. What kind of your thoughts? Because we heard about uh, Des Bryant calling the Garrett guys. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people talked about the Garrett guys. I mean, what is that definition of the Garrett guys to you? And is it is it came out that seems like a negative thing? Right, was it right, a negative right. situation while you were there? Or what's going? What was going on with that? I mean, it depends on how you look at it. You know, I, I was a Garrett guy. Everything everything is about perspective. Mm, okay. You know, and and a Garrett, every coach has their guys. And what it mean by their guys is, when I speak about a player, who who is he as a person? How he is defined as a person? And as a Garrett guy, it's the First guy in, last guy out. You know, a guy that's going to come in put team above self, work their ass off every day, you know, and go ahead about the right way. Good character guy, stand out of the media. You know, th- th- those are true Garrett guys. You know, Garrett guys are your you Sean Lee, your Tyron Smith, your Zach Martin, your Travis Fredericks. You know, th- th- those are your, your, your Garrett guy. And Randall Cobb came in from day one and was a Garrett guy. Mm. You know, Dak Prescott, a Garrett guy. You know, so it's just that guy that you want to build your team around and have their, when someone look at your team, well, they know anything about football, you know, what, what can they say about this organization? What can they say about these different players? Tyrone Crawford, you know, a uh, Garrett guy, you know, one of those guys that's willing to get in there, get it out the mud, get gritty, you know, and do whatever it takes to help the team and put the team above self. Uh, I'm a fan of it. I think every coach has their guys. You can have a Saban guy, you can have a Parcells guy. You know, so w- w- whatever that guy means, the definition or characteristics of that guy. So would you would you say Garrett guy and right kind of guy? Because that was another moniker, right? Right kind of guy. We heard Jason Garrett say that all the time. Is that the same thing, pretty much? Almost definitely. Uh, that's exactly what it is. You know, trying to eat, like he always say, you want to build an organization around the right type of guys. You know, and that right type of guy 
indirectly is a Gary Knight. Right, right. And I think it got it, it, it took on a bad name after, you know, the the Des Bryant yes, interviews. Right. But, you know, I was one that was behind the right that was we called it the RKG, the right kind of guy. Um, yeah, I was yeah. behind that moniker because when when he came out and explained it, it was it wasn't just some saint, right? You weren't just this perfect person. It was somebody exactly. that loved the game. This is what he said, I think. Someone that loved the game uh, of football, and they they came and they worked hard, like you said. They brought their lunch pail and they did whatever they could do to help the football team. That I like that. If if that's yeah, what a Garrett yeah. guy is, yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Because I mean, like you said, it, it it's it's not the saint because who one is a Garrett guy. You Who's know, that? and, and uh, Zeke, Zeke, Zeke's oh. a Gary guy, you know, and people say, oh, well, Zeke's in the media and this and that, but Zeke's a Gary guy. Zeke's not the perfect guy. No, one's on, no one on that roster is the perfect guy. Gary's mm-hmm. not the perfect guy, you know, so the Gary guy is not the perfect guy. It's that, that lunch pail guy, hard hat, steel toe boots on, coming in and ready to get work done every day. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so... <clears throat> That's a, I mean, here, here's my thing. That's a great definition. And I, I always, this is just my opinion. And you let me know, this is going to be just my opinion. So when Gary came in, this is what I felt. I felt like he was a good coach. I just never felt that he was ever going to get the team over the hump. That's just my opinion. I felt like he was always going to be in competing. If you watched his whole career at Dallas, there were rarely blowouts with Dallas. Dallas was always competing. And that's what kind of always seemed to save him when the season would start going bad the team would always be fighting to the very end. So you can never look at the team and say, well, the team is giving up on Garrett. They're just giving up on him. So let's just get rid of the season. Like they were saying, uh, Wade Phillips before, you know, they switched over. So you never had that. But what do you think was the reason, just like even in, at your time, those three years, they had the December swoon. Dallas would be doing good. Then always something would happen. It would seem like always something would be happening. And people were saying, well, is, is, is it Garrett? Or is it the players? What what was really always the inconsistency? One year up, one year down. One year up. What what do you think that what was going on with that? I mean, as we as we always talked about as a staff, man, everybody has their hand in the pot. You know, from front office to players to everybody, as far as wins or losses. You know, so it, it's hard to say. You know, uh, to point the finger at one way or another. And I and I'll never do that. You know, I never point to. Is everyone has their hand in the pot? You know, their reason of why it didn't work out, you know, because we can go back to the Green Bay game, why it didn't work out. You can say the referees, yeah. <laughs> you know, or, or the official or NFL rules, you know. So it's so many different ways you can say why things didn't work out. But you you called it yourself. People talk about Garrett as a coach. I and mean, you said also said guys never gave up on him. Guys always work their tail off for him. That's one of the biggest compliments as a coach. Mm-hmm. How hard will my guys go out there <clears> and play for? You know, because the guys on the other side, they're getting paid too. You know, so so that's the thing about it. The, the Eagles, the Redskins, the Giants, the Saints, those those teams, those players, they got good players, good coaches. Everybody have good players, good coaches in that. You know, other than Cleveland. But no. <laughs> 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 but no, it, it, it's the good players and good coaches on every team. So just watching how hard guys went out and played for Garrett was, was unbelievable, man. That uh that last Redskins game last year was that was one of the most defining moments of my career as a player or a coach seeing what what transpired in that locker room after that game it was, mm. it was unbelievable what was it like in that locker room that day oh, it, it was one of the most emotional uh locker rooms i've ever seen in my life really? you know uh because guys knew it the writing was on the wall i was about to say knew that uh we weren't going to the playoffs and it was a, a really good chance that jg wasn't coming back you know so you had guys standing in line like they get ready to get on a, a roller coaster on a texas giant with tears in their eyes grown men Dang. Tears running through their eyes just to hug JG, you know, yep. knowing what it was because coaches, players, everything, you know, was just just tears from everybody. Or 21, Zach Martin, Tyron, like grown men, you know, with just tears in their eyes, just running, just flowing because we knew what it was and we knew the passion. We knew they knew how bad JG wanted, the staff wanted it, and how bad they wanted it for JG. So I'll say this in front of anybody, anywhere, any place, those guys believed in JG. Uh, they wanted JG. They wanted JG, you know? So will they respect McCarthy? Of course, that's the business of it. JG right. leaving, that's the business of it. But for anybody to say that those guys didn't put on the line and didn't want to play for JG, I'm man, that, that, that's a lie. Yeah, you know, I think and, that, and it, that's what we wanted to hear because yeah, so many yeah. people, especially that last season, 
Yeah. PT, a lot of people were feeling like they're giving up on Garrett and that's why the season's happened. So uh, you being in that locker room, it, yeah, we yeah. Uh, we want to hear that perspective. Right, right, right. And like I say, any, any player in the locker room, like you, you know, you got your Jordan Lewis, you know, all, all your big time play, every locker in there, it was tears in guys' eyes. Like I said, Randall Cobb was there for a snap of a finger, you know, and he still was hurt, you know, because he's seen the type of guy that Garrett was and how Garrett put on the line every day and how he went to bat for his players. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's kind of deep right there. What about you, Will? Well, you know, I, I agree in the sense that I, one of the things I was trying to say during the season was I don't believe that people were just quitting on Garrett because I think Garrett, if you listen to the players, you it's in their DNA. Garrett is in the DNA. Yeah. Listen to what they're saying. You know, so I don't believe they were giving up on Garrett. It's just that, you know, I got to agree with Big Game James. I never thought that he was the type of coach to take us over the hump. But that doesn't mean that these players weren't going to go out there and play their hardest for him. And when you were talking about, you know, guys being emotional, it sounded like it was one of those times where you're a senior in high school or college and graduation yes. was coming up. And you knew, guys, this is the last time we're going to all be in this locker room together, and a majority of us, including the coaches. And it's crazy to hear that from an actual coach that was there because we put two and two together. And you saw how they came out and played for him in that last mm -hmm. game. Granted, it's the Redskins, right? But still, 44 points. Uh, what was it, 44-17 or something like that? Mm -hmm. With technically, the game was still on. The, the, the playoffs were still on the line. We, know, we didn't know until uh, like later in that game with the Giants and the, um, the Eagles. So, yeah, I mean, I believe that players play hard for Jason Garrett. I never thought that they would not play hard for Jason Garrett because – he has this, and you can maybe explain it better, but he has some type of aura over him, I mean, with him, that he, he gets over the players, and they become Jason Garrett in the yeah, sense, yeah. especially through the media. It, it's, it's about defining a culture, and, and that's what he did. Mm. You know, he came in, he defined his culture, and it's hard to now think about Dallas Cowboys without thinking about Jason Garrett. You know, you can just see that through the draft. And through everything that's going on with the Cowboys, you know, even to the every transaction that happened with the Cowboys, say hey, Garrett wouldn't have done that, or Garrett would have yep. hit. So Garrett is still on everybody's mind. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you ain't lying. It, yeah, it, we we, talk about I, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real, dog. I'm gonna just keep it funky. Like there have been so many games that I've seen that I felt like it was going to predict. As soon as I saw the first or second quarter, I'm like, oh gosh, here we go. It would just seem like it would happen that way. You get what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. gonna keep it so funky, like. When now that McCarthy's here, I'm going to still be get out of that mindset yeah, of here we go again. <laughs> is with yeah, Dak yeah, yeah. with interception. Here we go again. We're about it's, to it's do this same PT. stuff. Ten like years. we, uh, <laughs> 10 years of it, PT, 10, 10 years of it. So I'm, I, I'm trying to retrain my mind to think that this is not the same thing that's going to be happening. And as I said before, I ain't never hated on Garrett as far as like, oh man, screw Garrett, this and that. But I just, like I said, I just felt he was an average coach, and I just felt like he was never going to get championships. I felt like he was more of a better I, – I love the way he brought the culture, and yes. all the players were saying that the culture was good. Yeah, Nobody no. can any say that there was a bad culture uh, as far as, like, with Garrett because they said he was on it, and they yeah, said yeah, he was yeah. a stickler to – he was real meticulous in what he did, and I heard that from a lot of people. So I never doubted that. But getting over the hump, I never thought he was that coach to do that. Right, right. And, and, and that's one thing that, you know, I, ne I never go into the X's and O's and the schematics of a coach, you know, just out of respect for any coach. As far as a cultural, a culture and how he ran the organization, man, it was unbelievable. And I guarantee you, McCarthy said in his interview, trust the process. And everybody, everybody went yeah. crazy. Oh, trust the process. <laughs> trust the process. You know, so everybody, everybody went crazy. So I guarantee you, every time you hear trust the process, Big Red gonna go through your head. Big yep. Red gonna go yep. first time McCarthy clap. Big Red gonna go through everybody's head, you know. So <laughs> he better not clap. <laughs> <laughs> I got, well, real quick, just just elaborate on that. So, see, you, you know, you know about the clapping. You know how the fans feel about the clapping. What did, did the players feel that too? Uh, Keep it real, PT. If, 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 if you look at every player, every coach, every guy, every guy has their niche. You know what they do. Uh, you know, and that was just calming mechanism. Yeah, that was just calming mechanism. You know, whether it was, it was, it was a stress reliever, let me calm down, let me get back, let me stay calm, cool, collect, let me not get too high, let me not get too low. This is how I snap back. Every player that's every athlete has some form of snapping back, getting back into it. Some running backs may grab their towel, rub their towel. Some D linemen may beat up on their shoulder pads. 
whatever it may be, they find that way to lock back in. And that mm -hmm. was just JG's way of locking back in, not getting too high, not getting too low. You know, so that's why after interception or a turnover, he can clap. Because as a coach, you can't show any kind of panic. You can't show that, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going crazy because we just turned the ball over. You know, where fans may go throw a beer, kick a TV. You can't do that as a coach or a player. You know, next play, next play. You know, so that was his way of locking back in next play. I ain't gonna lie to you. Sometimes I want him to say, Dak, what the f was that? Yeah, get we, your we, we over yeah, here, yeah. playboy. <laughs> no, we wanted, I mean, come on, man. Sometimes we just like in the press conference, just get mad one time. I just want you to get mad one damn time, dog. I get it. That ain't your person, but I need to see it at least one time. But let me ask you this because 2018, right? They had, they get the trade with Amari Cooper. You know, we saw how the season was going to make the trade. Dallas goes to the playoffs. Boom, boom, boom. Looking great. Then you come in 2019, and I know you've been very vocal about Ezekiel Elliott. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I've been re I've been watching that Twitter Ooh, over, over there. <laughs> so they come Ezekiel Elliott holding out. I hear a lot of things from we had George Ioka on the show, the feeling that the we were hearing that the players felt good, but it was a lot of pressure on the coaches. We had other players saying that the the coaches were feeling a lot of pressure in 2019 that maybe they didn't feel in 2018. You were there as a coach. What was the thought? Uh, I don't think it was so much pressure, especially with the with the two one situation, with Zeke situation. That, that's business. So uh, on this profession, you can't worry about contracts. You know uh, that's going to happen. So the players stood behind him. We stood behind him. We knew it was just a matter of time before Zeke came back into that locker room. So we was excited. Also gave guys like Tony Pollard a chance to get out and show us what what he can do. You know, so that, yep. that helped us out. But a he lot. didn't play though. P P T do. What happened with that? The thing about it is, like, it's hard to take 21 off the field, you know, uh, and not not only because of what you paid him, just because who he is as a player. You know, offensively, is it good things that we could have done to get 20 off the ball? Of course, you know, but again, like, I'm not in it for the schematic parts of things because you can look at it and say, oh, well, cool. We give Tony the ball. What was it? The uh, Philly game? Uh, Philly, I knew Down that was in the coming. red zone, <laughs> and he put it on the grass. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so so you can't, it, 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 it's, it's hit or miss. Like, fans will never just be just always so excited because the Vikings game, we give Zeke the ball, and he gets stuck. Then the next week, we don't give him the ball. Why can you give Tony the ball? And vice versa. You know, give Tony Paul the ball. Give Tony Paul the ball. Give TP the ball. You know, and he fumbled down there in a crucial situation. And nothing against TP. Fumbles happen all the time. Mm -hmm. But it's just, okay, you got to be careful. Like, oh, this is what we want. This is what we want. And you get what you want, and it doesn't work out for you. You know, so the thing about that is it wasn't any pressure. There's no pressure than and it is from, from day one. You know, it, it, it's a bottom line business. The main thing is the main thing. Get in and win games. You know, from a coaching staff as far as from players. But you can't allow pressure to deter you or get you off your game or have you so focused on what the media is saying. You got to ignore the noise and go out and still play ball. It felt like that was one of JG's things where he he did a good job of having the players. Well, maybe except for D Law. D Law loves the media, but <laughs> most of the players try to ignore the media. But maybe the pressure James is talking about more so is um, the pressure to win because this could be the last dance, right? When I mean, we just seen yeah, the last yeah, dance yeah. with the Bulls, but this feels like the last dance because we we've heard Cheeto. We, we've heard yeah. uh, Kayvon Frazier uh, come out and say, hey, man, you know, some some things were put in the game plan during the week and then, you know, come come game day, completely scrapped. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know, I don't know if that was pressure or if that was by design, but that, I think that's where a, a big game, I think, is kind of leaning towards. Did you did you feel that with the coaches, that there was some no, pressure? No, I, I, I didn't feel pressure at all. No, and, and, I, and I, guess, I guess I said it because – I play for the Cowboys, you know, yeah. so there's no, there, there's no pressure. I mean, the only pressure is win Super Bowl or bust. Pretty and, much. and that's how it is with the Dallas Cowboys, you know, and then going into JG's last year from his contract, not having an extension. So we already understood like, okay, cool. This is what we have to do in order to be extended. We're all under JG's umbrella, yeah. you know, so we took it as more as motivation per se than panicking or anything like that because the Dallas Cowboys from draft and we draft, uh, we draft big time receiver, and now we're going to the Super Bowl. I guarantee if we go out and lose first preseason game, now we suck again. Yep. You know, so that's just <laughs> yep. that's just what you take with 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 the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, you ain't lying about that. Now <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's crazy we hear that big game because 
J- Jason Garrett doesn't seem like he he felt much pressure. He was always Jason Garrett. Yeah, That's he one was thing I will same. give he him credit. Changed. He didn't. He stayed down that line. Whether you was thirteen and three or whether we was eight and eight, he was always Jason Garrett. So I don't even know if it was JG that was feeling any pressure per se uh, coming from some of the players, but um, I know he felt it, but I don't think he showed it. Everyone exactly. feels and, it in and, Dallas. And, 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 and that's the best way to put it. You know, you understand, you understand, you see the writing on the wall, the main thing is the main thing, but you can't allow you to, fo- you, can't, you can't focus on that. Right. You know, you still got to go out there and play a full quarter football game every week. Do you yeah. do you have any insight on McCarthy or McCarthyisms or any of the new coaches that are in staff? I know it's a bunch of different ones, so I don't know if you kind of, you know, rub shoulders I mean, with any of those guys. I, I know they got uh, the best running back coach. I know that. Oh, I yeah, only you, say that. I only you say that. Skip skip, Pete, right? you, know, yeah. you know, that. that that's the guy that gave me the opportunity. Yeah, you know, like yeah. I said, G, G, GB is my guy. You know, I was able to play with both of them. You know, but Skip, Skip was the one that beat, beat on the table to say, let's get this guy in here and give him a shot. You know, that was the guy that called me back in uh, July of 2011, right after the lockout, you know, when no one was even calling guys. And he called me and said, we want to bring you to San Antonio for training camp. But that was the first, first voice I ever heard out of a Cowboys organization. So Skip Peter always be here to me. I love that hire. You know, so so Skip Peter always be my guy, no matter what. You know, and so with Skip being back in the building, man, uh, uh, I'm so excited for that running back room and for the organization and for Skip Pete. What do you think that does for Zeke? You know Skip better than anybody on yeah, this it, panel. Yeah, it, it, it's the same, man. Skip and GB are two of the same type of guys. You know, and, and, and Zeke is a, a really good player. You know, I think more so it helps out guys like Tony Pollard, oh. you know, mm-hmm. so so he's able to be there for, for TP and things like that. So the, the, the running back room, I don't think will miss a step. They didn't miss a step last year, you know, so I'm excited about it. It, it, <laughs> it, it couldn't have had a better swap out, you know, between GB and Skip P. You know, so emotionally, of course, I'm tied to Skip. You know, both of them are outstanding coaches. I was able to play for both of them. I got a question, a running back question for one of the fans. Big game, if you don't mind. Go yeah. ahead. Um, Lunatic said, what type of running back should the Cowboys have as a RB3? Should it be a short yardage back or a, another pass catching type back? Because we only got two backs hard. right now, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as an RB3, man, really, to be honest. Uh, special teams. RB3, yeah. special teams guy. Mm. You know, uh, our, our RB3 is shouldn't even be focused on the offense per se, you know, he got to be a special team thing where he can return kicks and go down and tackle on kicks, protect on the punt. So to answer this question, it, I, it wouldn't be a, a smaller guy or a pass catching back to me, mm. you know, because that's where you want your change up guy and your number two that can get in there and, and, and get it done. But a RB3 would definitely be a, a true special teams guy, you know, so say for instance, if we, if Rod Smith was on this roster, yeah. you know, and he was an RB, and he would be the perfect RB3, you know, that mm. guy that can be just a dominant ace on special team. And if he had to get in on third down and pass protecting, I think he's that guy. Prime example, Jameis all the while. I was about to say Jameis. He, mm-hmm. He's your or he's your RB3. Pretty much. Yeah. You know, no doubt. Yep. Okay, because I was hearing they just drafted, <clears throat> they had a lot of uh, players, you know, that they had on the undrafted kick, and they're yeah. talking about this kid, I believe it's, I can't remember, Darius Anderson from TCU. He, TCU. Saying, yeah. he may, because may, this is what I look at. I, I can say that a coach may like a player, but I look at them salaries. I look at what the way they sign you, and I look at them guarantees. So if they like you, I feel like they're going to give you some money, and he was one of the higher people that they gave, uh, t- I think, 10000 on the guaranteed. So, when you see something like that, if you have those three, let's say you got TP, you got Zeke, uh, Jamez, do you see a fourth running back making that roster like a rookie like him? Well, uh, if, if this was last year, no. Okay. However, with the new roster changes that I got to become familiar with, mm-hmm. you know, it gives guys like those true special team guys, I think, an opportunity now with it being a 55-man roster instead of a 53 yeah. roster or vice versa and all those things with practice squad guys. But... I mean, the thing about it is training camp is open to all, and it, it, it's open competition. Mm-hmm. So just because you were drafted or you, you got a lot of money, like you still got to go in and, and, and produce. Okay, well, <laughs> let know? me add- and, 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 and the biggest thing is you bring guys in, good guys is you bring them in for competition. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so the moment you're signed, the moment they sign the kid from TCU, the moment they sign a big time receiver, 
they're trying to replace those guys. <laughs> mm. The scouts on the road watching the tape right now for next year's draft. So guys got to understand, as soon as my name is called, this team is trying to replace me. You know, so the, 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 those are the small things that guys got to understand. You know, as soon as I'm signed, as soon as I walk in this locker room, the organization is trying to replace me. Yeah, it's a different way. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, now let me ask you this. So, I was frustrated. I'm gonna be very honest with you. I was very frustrated when they brought Jason Witten back. Very frustrated. <laughs> um, I don't think they should have did it. And I think that you know that Garrett guy thing, in my opinion, got swayed over to Witten. And I feel like I, I now, first of all, I understand what he's did with the organization. He's been class. So, not not no disrespect at all from that. Yeah, we love Jay Witt. We love Jay Witt. But but for real, just like you said. There's a there's a time now, okay, yeah. and I believe last year I wanted to see some Blake Jarwin, Blake Jarwin. And, when, and when they brought in Jason Witten, it was a situation where oh Jason Witten's only going to come in and pay twenty percent of the snaps, and we're going we're going to let Jarwin work. That that was to me a lie. I don't feel like that was ever a case where Witten was ever going to be on the bench and Blake Jarwin was going to be playing ahead of of Jason Witten. Come on, y'all, we, who who are we fooling right now? See what I'm saying? That's the kind of things that kind of frustrated with me. And even when we had uh, Ioka on there, I mean, we heard that it's an open competition, but these spots are kind of always already kind of set. Now, from your perspective, do you see that the case? Because I mean, it happened with Whit with Jarwin. Do you see that as a case with, let's say, like with Jeff Heath or or some other players that came in that you say there's an open competition, but really is it? Yeah, I, I think it's an open competition uh, as far as your QB want. I mean, as far as your guys, you know, so a running back coming in, you know, it's like, okay, cool. I, I got to go be extra extraordinary for and two one has to not play well for me to have a have a job or have a spot over two one. But as far as competition, it's competition at every level. Mm -hmm. You know, and some 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 may be a lot harder than others. So with it, say for the win, we'll speak on the win situation. Okay. The win coming back, this entire organization knew how gritty win was, how mm -hmm. passionate Wit was. So we knew it was gonna be some issues. <laughs> you know, as far as how how we're gonna how, how are we gonna handle 82, you know, because 82 is passionate about everything that you do. And we knew 82 coming back. We knew like, man, I don't, I don't know what's in contract talk. I don't know what front office is talking about, but mm -hmm. I played with 82 and I was able to coach 82, 82 won snaps. You know, See, so. when, when he when he took the two payoff and went ball, you knew it was true. Yeah. You knew he wasn't coming to sit on the sideline. Man, man. He wasn't coming there yeah. to sit on that bench, no, dog. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, but one thing I can say is indirectly, I think eighty nine and that the group they definitely learned from him as a how to be a true pro. You know, and those guys are already pros between Dalton Schultz and and Blake Jarwin. But uh, I personally would have liked to see a little bit more of 89 as well. I think that guy, see, he, oh, man, he's, he's, he's a hell of a ball player, man. And he, and he goes about it the right way. I was fortunate enough. I'm kind of glad, you know, indirectly that Witt did come back because I was able to have that, him on special That team. was your guy. <laughs> yeah. That was your guy. I, I'm so impressed with Blake Jarwin. I'm probably the number one Blake Jarwin fan, man. I, I think right he, has, he has some of, if not the best hands on the team. I, I've, I don't think I've watched him drop a ball that hit him in his hands. I mean, he yeah. snags it, he catches it, he brings it in quick, and he gets upfield. People think he's slow. I tell them, go watch the game. He oh, game God, fast. Man. He, yeah, he he he's probably one of the most athletic guys on the team. And that's you know, what everybody we, we, says, too. Yeah, yeah, we would do cone drills, things like that, and the DBs out there, you know, trying to go over and over just so they can beat his time. So he wow. he's a really athletic guy, you I'm know, sorry. strong, powerful, can jump, can run. You know, uh, Blake's a hell of an athlete. I can't wait to see more. We got two Blakes now, by the way. I don't know if you've seen there's another Blake. Blake Bell. They signed a tight end uh, number two named Blake Bell. He was a former quarterback. So got oh, two that athletes. Guy, that's Oklahoma kid, huh? Played yeah. Oklahoma. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 one yeah. Oklahoma. I think one mm -hmm. played at Oklahoma and the other played Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Blake Jarwin was Oklahoma State. Yeah, yeah uh, cool. the Oklahoma kid would definitely be more of a put his hand in the dirt yep. type of guy. True why? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what he was in Kansas City. It was their blocking tight end. Yeah. But yeah, man, for I'm sure. excited for uh, Blake, Blake Jarwin. But go ahead. I was just going to ask you. So a lot of people were talking about this Amari Cooper situation. <clears throat> I want to kind of get your thoughts on it, you know, because people were like, man, should you, should you pay him? It does he suck? You know, we had that situation at the end of the year where that was that big controversy where they're saying he took himself out the oh, game. Yeah. And what happened with that, man? Yeah, oh, I need it, to know. And talk, give, it talk to me talk, give it to a straight Cause dog. Cause I've been arguing. I, I want to know. I, I want to know somebody. the truth. Hey, what I, happened I, I, in that game? 
I have no idea what happened down there, man. I was damn. locked in with special teams. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> as, as far as far as what happened with Coop, man, uh, I, I don't know to this day. I still don't know exactly what went on with why he wasn't in the game. Uh, me personally, my best player is going to be in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. We told everybody to talk about 88. It would have been 12 guys. He's not, he's not loud. He's not vocal. You know, so in that situation, it's hard to say whether Coop didn't want to go in. Coop was told not to go in because Coop is just laid back and Coop's on the road with it. Right. Coop, Coop don't get, never get, I always hear that Coop don't really never give no kickback. No, he don't. He don't. Uh, not, not, not verbally per se. You know, uh, it, 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 it's different nonverbal things you can see from Omari once you get to learn about who he is as a player and, and how he operated, how he functioned. And that's one of the, 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 the specialties and the superpowers of a coach. You know, you got to figure out your guys. You got to figure out what, what makes your guys move and, and what, what, what motivates your guys and how you can get to your guys and get the best out of your guys. How can you change their behaviors and get them to do what you need them to do? Mm-hmm. What's, what's your thoughts, Will? Well, I'm dealing with the connection issue. You guys are good. We're, we're back on. There was a, there was some type of connection issue. That's why I didn't want to say nothing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you said, ah. You know, so I always try think, to make sure everything's good. Go ahead. So what do you think about this new staff that just came on, the draft? How, what are your kind of thoughts? Do you think the Cowboys nailed the draft? Uh, I think they did. I think they had a really good draft. Uh, I wasn't as excited for uh, the receiver. Uh, Lamb, you know, uh, I didn't think it was a bad pick, but uh, I, I personally would have thought, like, cool, let's go defense. But you, you couldn't go wrong because they end up getting the defensive guys that they wanted <laughs> anyway. Right, you know, not. so like I said, they, it, it, it was it was a great draft for them. That's why I'm glad I'm not a front office or a general manager guy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> much, much respect to uh, Will McClay and, and Stephen Jones, that entire staff that put in countless hours to go find players, especially at a time like this. You know, when you couldn't get out to the pro days, you couldn't have your visits, you know, so for them to be able to still get out there and get the right type of guys, it still shows that the culture that Garrett has built, they're still pulling on that. You know, even though Garrett's not there, some of the ways that Garrett moved and some of the things that he went by, it's only right for an organization to take what JG did right and keep that in the organization and build on that. You know, so uh, the, the draft, I was, I was excited about it, you know, to see the guys come in and that offense is going to be exciting. My thing Ooh. is, I'm ready to see how, how it comes together. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think I tweeted about, like, how many balls are we playing with? How many footballs mm -hmm. are we going to be able to have out there on the field? You know, so. I'm cool with that, though. Right. Yeah. I, I'm cool <laughs> with that problem, though. Yeah. I'm cool. I've seen them Rams. I've seen them Vikings. I've seen, I seen them uh, Chiefs. Uh, I, I'm cool when I see three receiver sets and all of them is nice. I'm cool with having a dog running back and somebody behind him that's a dog. I'm cool with having a dog <laughs> tied in. I'm cool with all that because, I mean, you can even say yourself, PT, there was games where Cowboys would have 500 yards but only have, like, 14 points or we lost yeah. Yeah. or we lost and leaving too many points on the board. And I think that was an issue because Dallas would move up and down the field all day, but they end up losing or not, or kicking field goals. And we saw what happened with Maher. You know what I'm saying? And we right, saw right, that right. debacle. What was up with that dog? Hey, that's your dog, man. That's your and dog, that's, man. Uh, what, what's up with that? that, that, that that's one position. Laid, like I said, at special teams, you know, we, uh, we didn't play well at all, you know, and uh, I take full accountability for that. We just, and at the kicker position, it's one of those spots that, man, it's, it's, it's very fickle. Kickers, kickers are, like are golf, a different right? type of guys. You know, exactly. You can't mm -hmm. just go and just rip them, and then you, you still got to go out and kick. <laughs> you know, so, and that's the thing is just, how when, when do you pull the trigger? You know, when, when do you make the move? And you can say soon, you can say this, but it's one of those things that, we made the move when we made it. People said it was too late, but then it was the right move, you know, because four bad came in and he, and he, and he performed really well for us. I, I, I got to um, ask you about uh, something about Maher I wanted to say. Now, he had a boot, and yeah, a yeah. lot of us as fans felt like, you know, and, and even even the coaches, I, I think Jason Garrett said it one time or two. Did, did Was it? Is this the truth? When you guys crossed the 50, did things change up a little bit because you had Maher? Like, okay, you know what? We can, you know, we're not going to be as aggressive because we can boot a 60-yarder. Uh, I, I didn't sit in on offensive meetings, so okay. I, I can't I can't speak on that. But okay. from a special teams perspective, we knew that once we passed the 50, this guy can put it through the pipes, you know, and, and he was better putting it through the pipes 
right after the 50 yeah. to get closer now, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, you know, let, 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 cool. let, let, let's take a hold of it until a personal foul and let's scoot it back so so Brett can put it through the pipes. But as far as the kicker position, man, you can you please tell me a kicker that wasn't missing last year? Right. You know, I, I, it's I a think, kicker. Yeah, yeah. Kicker, kickers are kickers. You know, kickers gonna miss. You know, but they got a they got a good one. I know you know uh, Greg Zerline. They call him Zerline, Legatron. But 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 if you look at Zerline numbers last he year, he missed last a ton year. last year. Yeah, he struggled you know? last year. Yeah, yeah, he, he struggled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I always thought that that maybe when y'all crossed the fifty, they felt like man, he can he could. We seen him boot what three sixty yards. That is unheard of. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was. It was unheard of. I mean, but you you you, you don't win games in the field goals though. I'll tell you, you that. Right. Yeah, you you got to get six, not three. And I think with this offense this year, <laughs> we should get a lot more than three. Uh, let me ask you something about about Michael Gallup because I know he's the guy that's kind of being forgotten um, in that receiving core right now by a lot. Um, to me, he reminds me of Dez at the catch point when he throw the ball up. But did he did he practice like? Did he look like that in practice to you? Is he physical like that, or or who does he look like, or what have you? Every every day, you know, every day he's gonna bring it. The way he goes up and attack the ball. Yes. The way he go the ways to go he go about his business, and I, it will be remiss for me to speak on Michael Gallup and not speak on Alan Hearns. You don't mm. see this MG without Alan Hearns. Alan Hearns was the guy that came in last year, MG's rookie year, and took MG on his wing and taught him how to be a true great player. insight. Nice. So, so the, the 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 Michael Gallup that you've seen from the Rams playoff game two years ago the 1100 yard receiver was because of Alan Hearns and mm. and Michael Gallup would take you know the same I like thing. Hearns. You know, Hearns came in, he put his arm around him, he taught him how to be a true pro, how to go about his business, how to work out, how to eat, what to do, you know, and, and MG, like you said, he's one of those guys that's been slept on. I'm like, how, why? You know, do, do we see what this guy do on a daily basis? You know, how he goes and attack the ball, how he makes the big plays and how coaches believe in him. You know, how we believe him, throw the ball, you know, give him a shot. How Dak believes in him, regardless of coaches, you know, despite that, how Ford believes in 13. You know, so that that, that that's much respect for Michael Gallup. And I think he'll have another outstanding year. And he's that also that type of guy that's even kill. He don't have to say much. He don't have to be verbal, but he's going to go out there and play the game the right way. And again, a Gary guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for a Gary sure. guy. For hey. sure. I got a I got a question from one of my members, uh, uh, PT, uh, and this is from the Lunatic. It says seemed like motion was used in some games more than other. Why was that, and was that by a JG design? And also, why was there mo- no more? Why was there not more two back formations with him and Pollard? When we say motions used, uh, I'm not for sure what he mean by that because on this level, you got to have self motivated. You can't, you can't expect for a, a coach. No, I think he's, no, he's, I think he's talking about like motion as far as sending guys in motion. Oh, like, motion. Like, yeah, yeah, like, when, yeah, like when we played like the, when you see us playing like the Dolphins, guys were in motion, guys were doing different kind of sets. And then you see us play against a really tough team. You're like, where all that damn motion go? How come they're not doing nothing? Now you look like they're running straight up the middle with Z. Why right. was that? Because that's where people were thinking, complaining, like Cowboys were co- putting it close to the vest when you got in these tight games, yeah. all that. Who high freelancing offense goes out the door when it gets close in the game. And that's what people were complaining about Jason Garrett. Yeah. So, well, well one thing about, you know, the NFL and coaching where it's different between like maybe like high school, college, anything like that. As far as schematics, you're so locked in on trying to get your schematics down that you're not. So with me, I wouldn't sit in an offensive meeting or offensive room to understand what they're going into the game plan with and, and vice versa. I wouldn't be in a defense of me knowing what they're going to game plan with. So you can speculate and say, okay, we should have did this. But as a special teams coach. You focused on your job. I'm, I'm right. focused on mine. You know, like I, 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 I'm missing field goals. So I can't worry about why we're not going <laughs> in motion. <laughs> you know? yeah, for sure. so That's I, a good point. I, 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 can't, I can't worry about that. You know, I, I, give, I gave up a block punt. I can't worry about why the defense is not playing cover three on certain different times. You know, so that, that, that's the mindset you got to have as a coaching staff. Now, sure, now, sure. now, PT, I, I, we throwing some, we throwing some stuff at you right here. So I appreciate yeah, no, you, man. I, I, I'm ready for it. <laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> it's coming. Yo got fire. Yo got yeah. flame. You was a special <laughs> teams coach, right? Yep. Yep. And I think the most controversial special teams play of the year happened at home against yep. Minnesota 
And I, I need to hear it because we didn't heard T, we heard we heard Tavon Austin and we didn't heard the coaches. And if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, at the end of the game, uh, we held uh, Vikings to a three and out. We still have some seconds left. Punted it. We we saw the still shot. Oh, it looked good for 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 Tavon, but he caught a fair catch. What what happened? Just kind of give us a clarification. We, we as a coaching staff, we dropped the ball on that. Okay. Uh, Tay Tay only did what he was supposed to do. You know, uh, and, and that's what we told Tay to do. So we as a coaching staff dropped the ball. Like nothing against Tay Von Austin. You know, like I said, now I'll take four to count three or four because I'm one of the guys that lined Tay up, you know. So we as a coaching staff, we didn't operate how we should have because we, we was thinking one thing. However, what we thought was wrong, you know, and okay. that it should have been, Tay should have had an option. You know, and we didn't pretty, we, we didn't give Tay an option. You know, we as a coaching staff told Tay to do and Tate did exactly what he was told to do. But that's trying to preserve time on the clock. You know, we didn't want to take get the ball and go back and forth, make guys miss, you know, and then get tackled at the one yard line. We don't have any time left. You know, so that was the thing that going to coach staff, like, ah, do we have enough time? Do we have this? Uh, so that was one of the things as a coaching staff, man, we, we dropped the ball on. Tate did exactly what he was supposed to do. So that was one of those, you know, you got to make a quick decision right now. You don't got time to... And, 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 and it's one of those things that you learn from. You know, it's one of those things that you got to work on during the week, you know. So we got caught with our pass downs, having not worked on that situation, you know. So after that, it's like, okay, cool. Let, let's work on these situations in case they come up again. So I guarantee you, we we, we took it for all the other 31 teams in the NFL to say, okay, cool. Let's look at the Dallas Cowboys situation in this, and let's learn from this situation. So that's one of those situations that, you know, we got to go back in the lab and learn from it and just take it for what it was, be accountable for it, and – we they we didn't make the right decision mm. in that split split time for Tavon Austin. Of course, Tay takes the blame. Why did he fair catch? No, Tay did exactly what he's supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. So Keto Quinn was a special teams coach. I think he's back with the team uh, in a different. I think he's a scout now, if I'm scout, not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, what was Keto Quinn like? Because obviously Cowboys fans bad is left a bad taste in our mouth. Um, but he wasn't a special teams coach prior. To what the last two years? Oh, was yeah, the, the, yeah, he was. He actually worked on the Rich Passaccia as one of the best first team coaches, you know, oh, to ever okay. step between the grass, you know. And he worked. He was a uh, KO's assistant for. I mean, KO was Rich uh, assistant for like maybe four or five years, you know. But before that, he was on the offensive side of the ball. So KO is one of the hardest workers. He knows the game. He knows the X and O's. He knows all that, you know. Uh, so there was nothing that KO didn't know, you know. It was he, he was a he was a young coordinator. You know, right. so as a young coordinator, you're going to take your lumps. You know, you, you, you're you going to take your bruise. You're going to take your growing pains as a as a young coordinator. It's the same thing with, with Kellen. You know, everybody came out with Kellen. And, oh, yeah, Kellen's great, 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 great. He took and then some he lumps. fall off and it's like, oh, it's just because he's playing sorry team. No, like you're going you're gonna to take your lumps. Was, any coordinator is going to take your lumps. You know, so it, McVay, you know, he's the best ever to do it. You know, and they come in and now he's taking his lumps. You know, so it's, it's just it's about making adjustments. And you know, whether it's adjustments from play to play, series to series, quarter to quarter, game to game, year to year. You know, you sit in, you self scout, and you evaluate yourself, and you make your adjustments. And to be fair to to not only Keto Quinn but you and all the special teams coaches, the special teams unit in Dallas it wasn't just last year has been struggling. It, it has been struggling for a good number of years. So, and it, with with a number of different coaches on special teams, so. That could be something that we have to look at beyond the specific unit and maybe look further, uh, look higher. But um, right. I know that McCarthy coming in as presser, he said, listen, man, we're going to we're going to take this serious. And he went out and got I, I don't know if you know if you know John. Bones, yeah, I know Bones. Yeah, I know Bones. But, Bones kept me up uh, many nights scouting against Bones and trying to figure out what oof. Bones is going to do. You know, so he's, uh, <laughs> he's that complicated, huh? Yeah, he, uh, he is. He, he's, he's a fun guy. You know, uh, from playing against him as a player and then coaching against him as a coach. You don't know what you're going to do. You, you don't, you know, and and that's the beauty of it, you know. And and, he, and what he do, he do it, he does it well. He, he allows players to go out and play, have fun, and be who they are. So I, I'm excited for that special team group, especially the players, you know, guys that I was able to coach and mentor for the two years I was there to be able to go out there with, with, with a guy like Bones and, 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 and get it done. You know. I'm not gonna lie. I want to see. I want to see Tavon Austin back with Bones. I do. I, do. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna do it, but but I would love to see him back with because he had great special teams years under him. 
in St. Yeah, Louis. He, he, yeah, he, he did. You know, and, and and that's just who Tay is. You know, uh, Tay's an explosive player, man. We get the ball in hand, you know, and his punt return and what wasn't what it was, you know. And like I said, we as a staff, we, I, I'll take accountability for that for not putting Tay in a, the right positions or even getting it out of Tay. You know, but you know, he, he he's, he's still a dominant player. He still got it in. I'm glad. I'm glad you answered that honestly, man. Salute yeah. to you, <laughs> team. Cause see, cause see, a lot of people try to run from it. So salute to you, dog. Cause you know what? That's real stand up. Cause a lot of people yeah. won't say that. They'll, they'll say all kind of other stuff, and you're like, yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> but hey, I got a quick question. A couple people in the uh, group, the lunatic and Brandon Griffin, are asking about Chris Jones. Yeah. Um, because they basically, I mean, we saw how yeah, was he, he was he was Uh-oh. good, and then I oh, mean, he went from the good to like wow, and you're like. What's what's up, Law? Yeah, Law's in. L- L- I got I got to move some All things right. around. Go ahead, y'all good. Uh, so what what was up? With, what's up with Chris Jones? Is he hurt? What's going on? Because he was really good, and then he has not been good the last couple of years. Yeah, John, Jones is going through uh through nagging injuries, you know, nagging injury, and, and never truly got to rest. You know, he's he, he's a very stubborn guy, and that's also his strength. You know, so it'd be times at practice we'd tell Jones relax, you know, and, and but Jones would Jones would always push the envelope, you know, uh, I think he's still a hell of a player, you know, and, and once he gets healthy and back to where he needs to be, uh, he'll be the punter that everybody expects him to be, especially with Bones, you know, so people are like, oh, Bones is going to cut him. I guarantee you, Bones is licking his chops to have Chris Jones as a punter. He athletic. It's my point exactly. He, he, he can throw the football, he can run with the ball, you know, and, and we know what he can do when he's healthy punting the ball. So with that type of weapon, with with bones, he, he he's going to exploit them, and it's going to be it's going to be exciting to see Jones get back healthy, you know, and be able to punt the ball and things like that. And also, just I mean, people look at punts down inside the twenty. You know, if if, if you're going three and out and you're not moving the ball, it's hard to put the ball inside the twenty. You know, so there's a lot of people say, oh, well, his numbers changed. He wasn't putting the ball inside the twenty, but different aspects of the game, all that goes into special teams and how we punt, where we punt from, what kind of punt we would do. But the biggest thing was John, Jones was dealing with things, uh, nagging injury. So once Jones get back healthy and able to rest up, he'll be the Chris Jones you guys know of. Weren't you there, I believe it was 2018, I could be wrong, could be 2017, when they played the Raiders and oh, then yeah, the Lions yeah, yeah. And, and he took off a couple times. And then when he laid out the lion, uh, yeah, the Lions yeah. return, <laughs> I was man. I, we were calling him the Punisher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chris Jones. Chris Jones. He, he, he's a really good athlete, man. And, and, and things that Bones want to do from a punt perspective, Chris Jones is the guy to get it done. Man, I I've never in my life did did special teams like like tape until we got Bones Fossil. So I yeah. went back and looked at <laughs> um, uh, what's their punter name? Hecker. Hecker. Yeah. And oh my goodness, like you said, if he get his hands on a healthy Chris Jones, because when he's healthy, yeah. he was good. Yeah, yeah. Man, I'm excited for it. Yes, what up, Law? We got What's Law up, Nation man? in the building. Law Nation in the building. I hear all of this fire. I hear all of this fire. So I said, let me, let me tiptoe in here, man. <laughs> what's up, Tana? How you doing, man? Man, I'm great, man. How about yourself? Man, you looking good over there, man. I, I appreciate I'm, it. I'm holding it together, man. I'm, I'm trying to get it going. You know how it goes, man. So yeah. uh, I know I'm at the tail end. I know you've been, what, about 45, 50 minutes strong. We, we rolling. We rolling. Y'all rolling? You man, good? Yeah, we rolling. You got, you got good. energy? You got your yeah, energy? good. I'm on it. All right. Uh, did y'all talk about Ezekiel Elliott and uh, the use of Tony Pollard already? A little, a little we, bit. We, we, we talked, talked about we touched Zeke, on a little, but not we touched on Zeke, but not really TP. And I was saying that, wow. are, are you going to see more of him? And uh, I want to ask you right quick, PT, mm-hmm. you said Tavon Austin. Now, if he stays on the roster, you wouldn't want to see like a C.D. Lamb back there or mm. even because T- I want to see TP on the kick return. I think oh, that's no what doubt. he's good no at. Doubt. No doubt. But punt return, you don't think about somebody like a CD Lamb doing that? Man, if if, if, if Lamb can do it with how explosive oh, he can do he it. Is, I believe he can do it. Yeah, <laughs> he can do it. Yeah. He's that definitely the guy. You know, it's hard, it's hard to talk about Tay right now because Tay's not on the roster. Right. You know, so right. we, right. we, right. we got to speak from, you know, Lamb being on the roster uh, and him doing it. But as far as Tony Pollard, man, he was one of the guys that I was able to evaluate and beat the table. Mm-hmm. And I was so excited to bring him in because I seen just his versatility and then also what he did as from a kick return. Seven kick return touchdowns in college football is, is unbelievable. And the NFL trying to know. kill it though, man. So, yeah. so so to do that, and again, that that's another area where we could have definitely excelled is, is 
turning him loose, giving him the green light, mm -hmm. you know, uh, giving him that Cordell Patterson treatment. Like if you got to put your heels on the back of the gold line, it didn't go. Yeah. You know, because he's, yeah. he's definitely that type of dude. Like he's a dude now. Well, no, well, let, me uh, you, let me ask you this, though, <laughs> as far as from a philosophy aspect. We know we had Coach Gary last year, right? And he's yeah. gone. What was his main philosophy? Because I looked at that Miami's game, and I was like, that is what we should be. That is what we should be. When Last year when we played against Miami, it was mm -hmm. like Tony Pollard slash Ezekiel, the main man, Elliot, Ezekiel Elliott slash Tony Pollard. But right, then the right. next week, the TP, same. Zero snaps. Zero, zero. snaps. Yeah. Can, can, you just, can you just give us some background information on that? I, don't, I don't want you to spill out everything. No, you're good. Spill you're out good. most of the things. As, 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 <laughs> as, as, far, as far as JG, man, he's he's the type of head coach that's going to let his coordinators coordinate. You uh -huh. know, so, yeah, he, he he's not going to step on anyone's toes and tell them what they should and shouldn't be doing. Uh -oh. You know, and then like I said, the the Saints defense was in much respect to them. Like they, they came out, out and they played. You know, they 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 ball well with their D line. Like we got right. pulled up front that game. Yes, you we know, and, 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 and anybody said so. I don't care if it was Ladane and Thompson back there. We got whooped. You know that game, and they just came <laughs> out and and, and, and and the Saints whooped us. They did. You know they, they 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 played well on the back end. You know uh -huh. I think Gallup, Gallup was out that game, so. Of course, they can go into their defense and just favor uh, Mark Cooper, and we don't we didn't have anybody else to go ahead and make those, you know, as spectacular and excel in the position that we needed them to. But they came out and they played as well. So as far as week to week, what goes on with in, in uh, mm -hmm. offensive meeting rooms, I'm not sitting there, so I can't speculate on say, okay. well, they said they're going to do this and they didn't do that. But of course, we all want more Tony Pollard. But I talked to him earlier. You know, you got to be ready to come take what comes with a rookie. Because we get to the Eagles game, crunch time, uh, yeah. get down there, red zone, big you know, and big, big TP put it on the ground, you know. So, yeah. but but when I say when I say he's a dude, and I'm sure, and I hope that Kellen McCarthy, Skip Pete, find ways to collectively, like I said, I don't know how many footballs they're gonna be able to play with now, <laughs> because we're talking about <laughs> CD Lamb. We want we want more Tony Pollard. We want more right. Zeke. We want more, Barb, we want Good more Barb. We want more. We want we want we want more. Like, we how many Blake Jarwin? How many footballs do we have? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, we 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 want to hit him from all angles, man. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's yeah. why I'm looking at it like it, it, it's all about. You play Madden. I know. I know it's a game that a lot of people right. say. But you, do you play Madden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, have you ever seen somebody so cold? It, no, it don't matter who you give them, and they figure out ways to score. Yeah, that is what I want, and I know this is a far fetch, but that is that is what I want Kellen Moore to look at this thing as. It's like I got weapons on every side of the ball right. as it relates to the offense. I think that we should utilize Tony Pollard a little bit more. Like you said, he's a dog inside the slot and also create that mismatch of using a CD lamb as well. So I think that we should be able to do those things. Right. We, and we can, and the thing about it is in, in defense, in a, or Kellen Moore and any coordinator in NFL, uh, like Bruce Lee said, would rather practice one kick 10,000 times mm. than 10,000 kicks one time. Right. So if you go into NFL practice and just look at the breakdown of it, some period is only six plays. You know, so we got to figure out what we're good at and get good at what we're good at, you know, and build on that. It's hard to say, okay, cool, we're going to go from every angle, this, 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 but sure. when do you have time to practice that? You know, so that that's the big, and, that, and that's to create that the creative part about it. You know, that is your creative mindsets like your Kellen Moore's and Kellen, as far as people saying, yeah, Kellen got it all, I guarantee you, Kellen's sitting at home stressed like, sheesh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what it, I got to it, do? It, it, yeah. It's a different type of stress. It's, it's like that college kid coming out. I mean, a yeah. high school kid, the five-star kid that's recruited by everybody. You can be recruited mm -hmm. by everybody or nobody. It's two different stresses. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so now Kellen has everybody. Now you got to figure out what he got to do to sit down. Because people think it's easy just because he have a roster mm -hmm. full, of, full of studs to, to go score 90 points. No, you right. still got to figure out how you going to divide this ball around. How do you, you going to keep these guys happy? And how you going to manage these guys throughout a 16-season, uh, 20, hopefully 20-game 20 season? So they, what they, should be the identity of this team, then? Uh, man, you got to run the ball. Uh, Zeke run first? You know, I, I think you have to. You know, I think that's the identity of the team, man, uh, how it's built. You know, with those guys up front, you know, I think you run the ball first. I think any offense, that that's your motive to run the ball. Because if you can run the ball against a defense, that's the most demoralizing thing ever to a defense is mm -hmm. taking, taking it. 
take and can't stop the run. So of course, Mahomes, everybody say, oh, well, what about the Chiefs? They didn't run the oh, ball. They didn't do this. Yeah, you check out that yeah. Super Bowl. Right. That yeah, Super yeah, Bowl, they ran that rock. Yeah. yeah okay. and, and then yeah. some. The, the, when they needed to make the big plays, it was a running back that made the big plays. Isn't that ironic? It it, big football plays. Is, a, is an interesting game, right? They try to bury y'all position, and then the Super Bowl – the MVP should have been a running back. Right. Yeah, no doubt. Right. Let's just be real. I love Pat, no but doubt. the no MVP doubt. should have been Damon Williams. Five uh, years from now, they don't even know who he uh, – I hate to throw the man name yeah. out there. They probably like, who? Yeah, who? he should have been MVP. Yeah. Like Larry yeah. Brown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, 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 when the Chiefs needed a big play, you know, and, and Mahomes wasn't Mahoming. He was not Mahoming. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was Mahomeless. Mahomes wasn't Mahoming. For three and a half it, it, quarters, it, it, he was Mahomeless. It, 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 it was Williams that gave him that spark. Yeah, but but you know the flip side of all of that, fam. When you look at the collective picture, the Chiefs, in order for them to win the Super Bowl, they had to stop the run. Right. You had, had to, to stop the Forty Nine. The Forty Nine ers came in that Iron thing red hot with the running. No doubt, no doubt. And then when they, the made, when they made Jimmy G, they made Jimmy G throw the ball, and that's something he wasn't used to. <laughs> <laughs> something I, I, he wasn't used to. I got an interesting question for you. You know what's crazy? You get PT on here. He play, he was on a special teams coach, and yeah. you think about all these special team nuggets that pop in your head that we don't really get a chance to dive into. So I I, well, I got you here, so I got to try to get it yeah. from you. Um, two years ago, I could be. I think it might have been a three and five year. Uh, the three and five start off here. Yep, LP Lattice Sir, ain't that how you say? Yeah, Lattice yep. Sir. I know that's your guy. You played with them. You played with them literally, and yep. then you coached with them. Um, but it ticked me off when in in, in um in Washington, Red okay, Skins. the Redskins game. That's what, snap. Is that something? Did the little hitch? I don't know what that was about. But does he do that all the time, or did he commit a penalty? Oh, he 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 do it all the time. Let me tell you one. Do the flag. Yeah. But one thing, yeah. one thing, one thing about special teams is you got to find that that advantage. So we stand and watch watching hours of film to figure out how we can get advantage. So kudos to the Redskins for being snitches. Ah, they probably did. <laughs> they were snitches. Straight <laughs> dry. They snitches. were straight you know, so, snitches. So, so, so what they do is they, they go to the official, like, okay, cool, watch him. He does this. You know, uh -huh. and oh, every snapper cool. does it. Every center does the it. The center does everyone, it. Everyone, yeah, everyone gets a call from adjust the ball. And LP does mm -hmm. LP did the same exact thing the next play. And they didn't call it. You know, so it was just one of those things that, man, we got was us, in Washington. Man. They got us. The Redskins, mm -hmm. Redskins, you know. <laughs> hey, that's the, so, and, and, so that's what it was. But no, that, man, LP is one of the greatest ever do it. Oh, yes. If there was a if there was a Hall of Fame, or Hall of Fame for long snappers, he'd be in. Oh, he'd definitely be there. For sure. I don't think he ever had any infraction prior to nah. that. No, nah. crazy. Been to the Pro, been, been to the pro Bowl. You know, uh, having missed a game, he's just great guy. Leader, leader on the field as well. I had to ask Man, him. He's been mm. there like 200 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's been putting that grind on for real. Grind. I got one quick question right quick. Uh, I know we've been flooding you with them. I, you know, I apologize. Yeah, he been, nah, we great, man. Man, he's been we've been bashing it. your head with hey, these Lord, questions, man. We, know, hey, we came in here with ammunition. Nah, I told you now. <laughs> we were swinging on PT. <laughs> we came in like. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? I come in, I come in like you off the top off rope. You came the top turbo. <laughs> right in there. All right. Are right, you ready, PT? Here about five of them. Now we bring in the law. <laughs> you know what I mean? I come in in this mug. But go ahead, Jay. What you go ask? ask oh, I just got one of my uh, people's. Uh, I know we kind of talked about it, but you know, he, uh, just a two dollar holler from John Matthews. I gotta give him a shout out. Um, he says, "Does do you feel that Garrett held the players back?" Mm. Yes. Yes. Ooh, uh, when I say me. when we say held him held it back, you oh, mean like do, did he speak that. up for him? Okay. Um, I wanna you tell uh, me in your 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 whole opinion because I want to hear what you're saying with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel it. How you doing, guys? And I, hold up before you finish that because I want you to say hey, Lord, you because you, you yeah. said something about coaches and players shouldn't be together at games and stuff. I seen an interview yeah, a couple yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, oh. Jumping that with that too. Yeah, Fire. So, so, so the, the, that was one thing from my perspective that I personally, as a coach, I don't like if it's not extended into the entire team. I'm not for the let's just take Joe Blow out and we're just going to sit. You know, now if if Joe Blow is the only guy that said they wanted to go, cool. You know, but I feel from a team vibe, it should be those moments that everybody should at least have that option to say no. That I don't want to go in and do this during the season, off season, anything like that. So that's just me. You know, every mm -hmm. player has their different relationships with coaches and things like that. But just from my perspective, if I'm a head guy, I'm not going to just isolate and take different guys out without extending that invitation to my entire team, my entire group. You know, if I'm a, if I'm an offensive guy, 
it, of course, I don't have to be out with the defense guy, you know, but at least I got to extend an invitation to my entire defense, I mean, offensive crew, you know, and that's just me as a coach. That's my perspective on things. So that was one of the things that I didn't favor. Uh, I think it brings kind of separation to the team. Right. You know? And my, my perspective, you see just one guy getting out of you, you didn't even get the invite. You're like, damn, you know, I thought we were one team, mm -hmm. you know, so that that's my yeah. perspective on things that I didn't personally favor. And that happened mm -hmm. during your time, your earlier years with the Cowboys? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, 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 that happened often, you know, and I, and I, and that, that just showed me the evolution of JG, mm -hmm. you know, because it went from that to when I was there in Dallas playing, we didn't have a leadership we didn't have that you know it was jg way and no way jg way jg way jg way you know but when i came here and i'm coaching for jg now and we got leadership committees that's of the players so the players come together and say jg we want to do this or we don't want to do this so they're able to bring any situation to jg and let them know hey in practice we don't want to do it this way we want to do it this way so he hmm. gave that leadership role to the locker room and allowed them to police themselves where hmm. far as when i was playing we didn't have that, you know? So therefore I give him respect for the evolving and understanding that like the player should have a voice. And then I know you asked about, do he go to back to back for his players? 100%. I can't, and I want, you know, speak on what he's done, but I guarantee, I tell you this, he go to back for his players, 100%, you know? Well, and, well and, speaking and, of that, speaking of that, you was talking about back, going for back for his players. There was a certain guy, and I don't know if you guys touched on this already. He was talking about Jason Gary guys. Yeah, we thought yeah. the first yeah, thing yeah, we yeah. talked about. Yeah, we, 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 uh -huh. we, hit that, okay. we hit that home oh, run out the oh, park. I'm so right late. <laughs> no, he, he explained it in the way of the right kind of guy way, you know. Uh, oh, okay. And, okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't want to speak for you, PT, but I just kind of uh -huh. real quick with Law, it wasn't this negative connotation really until – the Dez interview. I'm just be honest. Be honest. Right. But if you want to kind of quickly tell him the Jason Garrett guy is. Yeah, but like 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 still was saying, man, the Garrett guy is that that's who you want your team to be made up of. You know, okay. that those are the type of the culture, the characteristics, you know, the demeanor that you want your team made up of. When your entire team be a Garrett guy, you would want them to, mm -hmm. but it's not. You know, so it's your job as a coach as a leadership to make sure that we're getting the right type of guys in here and also the right type of guys out of here, you know, oh. what, what, whatever they may consist of, you know, and that's one thing that a lot of people knock the Gary guy saying all oh, his favoritism. I was, I mean, oh, you read my mind. That, 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 but, but mm -hmm. the thing, but the thing about favoritism mm -hmm. is my favorite guys are the guys that are doing things right. So if anyone right. say there's not favoritism, that's a lie. It's favoritism everywhere. You're gonna right. favor the guys that's doing things the right way. You right. know, and, and, and that's in any organization, any corporation. The guys that's doing the right things the right way is the guys you're gonna favor. I guarantee you, Phil Knight, he has his type of guys. You know, who's <laughs> a, who ever the night Phil Knight guys doing things the, the, the right <laughs> way. You know, uh, like I said, I, I keep bringing up Bill Parcells. You gotta be a tough guy to be a mm -hmm. Parcells guy. You, know, and that's from you can't coach, have no, no no thin skin because you call him. Uh, may he rest in peace. He call him old boy. Uh, she. He, what do you call him, Terry? Or Terry Glenn. Oh, Terry. He call him. He call and, him. And, and, and even with that, yeah. even when he came over to Dallas, what was they talking about him bringing? His guys. His, his guys. guys. Yep. Yeah. His guys. <laughs> Vinny you know, Testa Verde wasn't was a negative. There. I mean, he brought like <laughs> yeah. Keyshawn. He brought him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, and Richie Anderson. He yeah. brought him. He brought Rivera, the big tackle. You know, and it's just like it's just like the Raiders. If you can run really, really fast, you got a job in Vegas now. Oh, yeah. You got a job. If or if you, you a badass, really fast, you got a job. <laughs> or if you, you a, a badass. <laughs> yeah, that's the Al Davis thing. Al Davis don't give a damn. If you run a four two seven and you projected to go in the fourth, you get eighth drafted. overall. Welcome to Las Vegas. <laughs> and then now with us, it was like if you went to Boise, you know, you yeah. you, you on it, you on it, you made it. Man, it I mean, because because if you look at it, the Boise guys, Chris Peterson, or man. Garrett guys. You know, All them boys and guys were Garrett yeah. guys. They were Garrett guys. I mean, you, you got, you, you, of course you got your, the obviously D-Law, but my yeah, thing Tom is Crawford. with D-Law, I think with Crawford going down and that leadership of that room not being in there, I think mm. that was kind of of what affected that room. But if you just look at the boys and guys that we've had here, like 
all over. You got guys even like Darian Thompson, Cedric Wilson, guys that come in and just work their tail off and take advantage of every opportunity they got. And yeah. those are Gary guys. It's, it is refreshing that you are explaining that because I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. When you heard that term, and I'm just a fan, so I'm not there. Mm-hmm. But when you heard that right. term after, um, you know, Dez left, it definitely to me was negative immediately. It felt yeah, like I yeah, call yeah. it I call it the good old boy club or mm-hmm. the buddy buddy system. It just it felt like that when you heard that term. But then when you kind of explain, it's like okay, that makes sense. Um, it, it's not nothing to do with the buddy buddy system. It's just I want a hard worker. I want a guy that plays this this way and that comes and and, and works his ass off. And if mm-hmm. that is what that is, a right kind of guy, Gary guy, whatever the hell you want to call it, yeah, give me fifty six and a, or whatever. Yeah, but, but the only now. thing that threw me for a loop on everything, and I, you know, kind of feeling a uh, good old days. But the only thing that kind of made me scratch my head was when he called out Sean Lee when he said Snake Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, y'all talking about it, it already? No, 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 I don't I mean, think I, I, no, we ain't uh, talk about that. Yeah, one, yeah. I mean, just just one thing from a player perspective, oh, wow. and you you don't do that. You, you okay, don't, you so don't that do was a big no. Yeah, my, 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 my no thing that was a no no. My, my, that, that, yeah, that's was, a no go. Like, clear, yeah. no, no. Shoot, shoot all the shots you want at JG front uh-huh. office, Scott uh, Linehan, scouting, yeah. uh, Will, like all that. But one thing as a player, man, you 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 don't do that. You know, you you don't you don't go into the locker room. You know what? what even. No, I don't know what he was going at, or even if he felt right. slighted by Sean Lee. You call Sean Lee. You know, call him you, up, you, right, yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you don't that put caught us by like. surprise, PT. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and it was, interview. Interview. it was a live interview. It was a, it was a live interview. I will wait for him to say, "Oh my bad, not him, but somebody else's." At least, right, right, but he was right. like, and, yeah, right. said, and we, and, and we dealt with that as a staff because that was like right in the middle of training camp. Wow. You know, so so Sean mm-hmm. Lee could have definitely went back and reported and said, "This is it," but no, like. That's a Gary guy. So that culture of no one ever went back at this at all. Mm-hmm. Everyone said, Everybody cool, we got to lock in. We got to focus, you know, and that's one thing that Gary has. Not only Gary, and I think Gary does a good job because the Cowboys had so many distractions. So it, especially mm-hmm. playing in Dallas, you know, so he was really good at eliminating or decreasing distractions as much as possible and not letting it, those distractions and things creep in and affect the team. That's one mm. thing I will give him credit for is being able to handle everything that comes with playing under or coaching under Jerry Jones. Now, let's just yeah, be honest. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, it is not your normal organization. No, not at all. It's yeah. by far. Anything that happened in um, Cincinnati, oh, well, it happened in Dallas, the same thing. You already know that oh, stuff going up 25 oh, well, times. We, we, we see what's happening in Baltimore. If that happened in <laughs> Dallas, oh, oh my man. God. <laughs> Oh, oh, we was just talking my about God. that the other day. My Lord, how mercy. That, whew, that'd be a and, two-year and, and, talk. And the, cra- the crazy thing about yeah. it is when it happened, they're like, well, maybe we can get Earl Thomas now. We try to skip out of there. Yeah. yeah, I'm surprised Dallas, Dallas gonna fall in the equation some kind of way. We gonna some get it. Kind of way. I'm, I'm surprised kind of they didn't say former Dallas Cowboy free agent target Earl Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, su- I'm surprised. <laughs> Seriously, man. Seriously. Yeah. But yeah, I so, imagine that happened. Oh my goodness, man! So, man, when we look at these things, man, we listen to all of the four letter network, like the Skip Bayless is of the world, the uh, Stephen A. Smith. All of them, they fold a little bit, but at least Shannon Sharp, when when they bring the players on, he kind of hold their feet to the fire. How mm-hmm. you feel about that? Those talk shows in the morning time? Do you listen to? Oh, was on. Man, I'm, I, I, I'm for all of them, man. Like I said, uh-huh. I, I don't I don't ever mind a player going in and talking. My thing right. is, I just don't believe in players talking about other players like <laughs> personally, you know, I, 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 personally I, can't, yeah. I, I can't get down with that you know and i don't even like players that's commentators now even questioning the guy about what goes on in the locker room knowing that you was just in a locker room you know so it, it's oh. so 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 i have my views about you know the the ray lewis and uh the jerry rice when those guys get behind the mic i'm like come on now yeah. you know you you, you was once in that locker room. So you got to keep that same code. You know, that mm-hmm. code is throughout. And that's why I respect guys like Marcus Spears. You know, and he's, oh, yeah. he's one of the up and coming, yeah, one of the indeed. biggest guys doing it because Spears still hold true to that code. You know, mm-hmm. a lot, what goes on in that locker room, man, it, it, it stays in the locker room. So I don't care about guys coming on and talking about front office or coaching staffs or anything like that. But to get on, to get on there and drag guys in your locker room, 
you know, like that what your guy did, uh, uh, or, or Orlando. Said, he, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no comment. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what about Odo, man. <laughs> oh, oh, like, well, oh, a lot of cowboys. He love the cowboys. He love the cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> but whoo, man, when he go on that damn show, it is fireworks. Yeah, but you yeah, know, yeah, standards yeah. been like yeah. that from a one day one. Ain't I mean? Can we not believe? They call that? him the Grouch the, the, over at DallasCowboys.com. Grouch, Dallas the grouch or the and, Grinch. And, and, but, but, but the thing about it is that's that's what made Skin yes an eleven year player. Yes, yeah, his, True. His, that edge, because, that you know, his, his, his gift can be perceived as his curse because that was Skin. He played with Skin. Skin was going to do that. He played with that. I'm a fifth round pick chip on my shoulder for yeah. for his whole for career. Like Ten years, whatever it was, he was in Dallas, yeah. and you know I respect. The, 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 the first time I walked in the locker room, I was like, "Who is this guy?" You know. <laughs> so he, he had to be what like, 180, 185. Yeah. I, was yeah. like, I was like, "What?" I was like, "Why is he so angry every day?" <laughs> every day. Ah, man, every we need day more of that. Scan was upset. I'm cool. With, we we need that. Hey, were Scan you there? Upset, when, were you there when uh, was it Jenkins? Were you yeah, there? Mike, then? Yeah, Mike Jinks. Yep. When we, okay. when we drafted Mo. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you were there when all of them was there. So mm -hmm. how was that battle, though? I know we going all the way back, and uh, I think O ultimately got that that that, that deal out of them. I like Michael yeah. Jenkins. I, I did. I heard. Him. I like Michael Jenkins. Man, it, it was none of those things. Like as the players, we didn't understand why we drafted a number one corner. We had Mike Jinks. You know, uh, right. we didn't understand as a player staff. Like I said, our loyalty was to Jinx. You know, but it wasn't any kind of unhealthy relationship with Mo walking in the locker room. As soon as Mo walked in the locker room, everyone embraced Mo, including Mike Jinx, you know, and put his arms around Mo and got to go, got to Mo to where he needed to go. Now, did Mike Jinx still feel slighted from front office? Hell yeah, he did, you oh, know, and, and, and he made that known to a front office. Mm -hmm. But we had, we as a team knew like, shoot, we got your back, Jinx. We got your back and we still love him Mo. And that, that's the beauty of an NFL locker room because you can do both. Yeah, it's a brotherhood, 100%. Like, I, Jinx, we back you, and Mo, we support you. And, and we, had, we passed up on some dogs. Well, well we that's, a, that's a great segue, actually, to to, to this. Because before we let you go, I got I to gotta ask you about it. You're talking yep. about being able to, you know, side with the player in the sense of you my dog and then have that understanding that this is a business, right? Well, that's going on right now with Dak Prescott. Yeah, um, yeah. Mm. You could kind of speak a little bit on it. Last year, Dak was there, Zeke right. was, and we talked about Zeke earlier. But now, the tables are a little bit flipped. Where Dak isn't under contract, and I know COVID nineteen is happening right now, so it's a little tougher to get a you know get a grasp on things. But what's your take on the Dak Prescott thing right now? Oh, it's the same thing. I feel Dak deserves every penny that he wants. So I will go ahead, I go ahead and put that on the table right now. Every penny that Dak is asking for, he say it loud and for everybody you know, in the back. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and he and he should get it. And everybody in the locker room feels the same exact way that uh, Dak deserves every penny that he's asking for. Uh, of course, it's logistics of things and ins and outs of what Stephen Jones and Jerry's on the front office is dealing with. So uh, I've never wrote a contract, you know. So I understand that it's their side of it and the logistics side of it. But if you ask me personally, I think Dak deserves every penny that he's asking for. You know, as far it? as just speaking on how the locker room feel about it, it's the same way with Zeke. You know, like no one ever doubted Zeke. We knew we had to make sure we still went out every day at work and got things done so that when 2 1 comes back, things will pick up. You know, and it was funny uh, the day 2 1 came back, he was back at the star. You know, and he was walking like he was looking so tired. And a lot of people was like, oh, is he out of shape? 2 1 was like, to us, we knew 2 1 was just mentally exhausted. He was mm. mentally exhausted because he wasn't able to be out there with his folk. Man, I'm that, glad that, 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 That's what was killing him. That's what Man. was keeping him up all night just because he couldn't be out there with his brothers. You know, he couldn't be out there with GB and the running back coach and his mm -hmm. coaching staff in their room. So he was frustrated. He was exhausted mentally because he couldn't do what he wanted to do and get out there with his boys. And the entire locker room knew it. So no one spoke him. No one spoke negatively on him. Oh, he ain't here. He holding himself. No. We all understood it. And you're able to separate the business part of the office and then what's going on in the locker room. Even even from a coaching staff, like we understand, like we don't speak on that. Right. I mean, yeah. you were in the locker room with Dak and you yeah. were in the locker room with Tony. So you got a chance to see two franchise yeah. quarterbacks yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, at yeah. the helm in Dallas. Um, mm -hmm. Can you kind of speak on that a little bit? Like the control, I don't want to say control, but like how the locker room kind of came around those guys or, or Dak specifically. Man, I, I speak on it just when I spoke about how JG would go out with Romo 
you know, and we would see that, right. you know, and mm-hmm. kind of like lock like, ah, you know, but with Dak, I think Dak is more of a uh, personal guy. He's more of a, uh, more of a locker room, like more of an energy guy than Roe was, you know, and that's just their demeanors. But I think guys uh, get behind four before they get behind nine. You ain't you know, the first person to say that. He, he, I was just I, about I to heard, bring up Jason Hatcher. Jason yeah. Hatcher, yeah. here he comes. Because he he's the first, he was first the one that, that was real vocal about and what you're saying. The exact yeah, thing yeah. saying, the exact same things was, that you're saying that Romo going out with the coach at games. He, he yeah, mentioned yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. He said people in the locker room did not like that. And he was saying that. He didn't feel, he said he felt like Dak Prescott was more of a leader than Tony Romo. What are your thoughts? No, I agree 100%. You know, uh, yeah. and that's not and, that, and that's not discrediting Romo anyway. So I'm not going to speak down on Ro. I'm just going to mm-hmm. speak up on four. On Dak. On Dak. Got you. You got know, you. Uh, Dak leadership is, is contagious, man. Uh, I love hearing that, man. I, I don't, I I, I don't it, care yeah. who you are, man. He, he, he's going to sit down. He's going to play dominoes. He's going to play spade. He'll go out there and throw touchdowns. You yeah. know, he, he, he yeah. he's that fun guy <laughs> to be around. I don't care what we're doing, man. Shooting this shit, just having fun. Like, he's that contagious guy in the locker room where he can sit down and vibe with the defensive guys, uh, clown with the defensive guys, come back to offensive guys, go down with special team man. guys, kick punch, throw balls, run around the offensive line. Like, he's very contagious throughout that entire organization. And with Roe, you just didn't have that, that same vibe with Roe. You didn't have that. That, that, that Dak is going to get out there with whoever, wherever, whenever, you know, and, and go to war for his boy. That, that yeah. confirms the nuggets, man. That confirms it. That confirms yeah. the art. There was an article on Dak's rookie year, and a rookie, by the way, came in and he, he you know, he not say took over the locker room, but he was, what's, what's the word? Ca- captivated the locker room. Is that the word I'm looking for? Right. Um, right. And there was an article that came out and said, you know, the difference between the two is that Dak Prescott, like you just said, he can. Be with the offensive guys, and he can go right on the other side of the locker room and kick it with the defensive tackle, yeah. and you know, defensive yeah. tackle room or what have you, and it's just like nothing. And then you look into Dak, and you see that you know he 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 has a degree in uh, what is it? Uh, be, uh, something about behavior, uh, leader management, psychology, some, and all some of some type stuff. of leader yeah. management yeah. behavior degree, and you and you can see it. He just knows how to connect, mm-hmm. and you're confirming it. Man, right here, one, right one, one thing I found one thing I found out amazing about Dak is just his mental his mental toughness. I don't think he gets enough credit with that. Everybody talks about his mental toughness of what he do mm-hmm. between games. Like, imagine a rookie, Mississippi State, was it fourth, fifth round? Fourth round. Coming in and having to play Tony Romo got hurt. And that's cool because Rose yeah. hurt. But now Rose comes back and you're in mm-hmm. Dallas and you have to dethrone Tony Romo. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, and, he, and he never cracked. Never cracked. I remember talking to him his rookie year and I was like, what now? You know, that, that was the first question I asked. <laughs> like, what now? now? <laughs> yeah, what now? I mean, you came in, your rookie year, you balled out, you get thrown, what now? You know, and, mm-hmm. and he's lived up to it. He's answered that question every day. Before every game, preseason, playoff, that goes to an entire team, staff, trainers, and shakes everybody's hand. Right. Wow. Man, you saying some good stuff. Time. You saying some good stuff, especially out there in Oxnard. You know how they blow the horn and he goes yeah. around and he literally – he signs every the, yeah. the, the people have to pull yeah. him away from the people. Yeah, yeah. Stop yeah him from signing, uh, signing the deals out there. So yeah, you speaking truth right there, fam. As, as, yeah. as that Prescott man, you know, you, and you can't you can't put a price tag on that. Oh, you, can't. you know that 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 that's the leadership man, you, you you can't put a price tag on. This is the things that we try to tell some of these fans is that, you know, you yeah. got He's still, I know this sounds crazy because he's a four year quarterback. He's still 26, 27. That's 26. fairly young yeah. in a quarterback's lifespan. Yeah, yeah, these yeah, guys are yeah. playing to 38, 39 years old. And not only is he improving on the field, because he is improving on the field. Okay, guys, not, not mm-hmm. you, BT, but the guys out there, people saying that Dak isn't, you know, this good quarterback. But not only is he improving on the field, he is amazing in that locker room and off the field, and that is half the battle as a quarterback because you yeah. can be you can be Jay Cutler with the arm, but nobody was going to war for nobody Jay Cutler. Won. And I'm play for <laughs> right, you know, uh, I mean, just just shout just, out just to Jay Cutler though for his wife's uh, situation. This is example. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Shout out to you, big dog. Shout Tell her to get a job. I mean, you can the, 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 the allegations in Philly, but mm-hmm. the allegations in Philly about guys that just don't want to play for wins. You know, and we can say there are rumors, you know, but you guys come and you hear guys saying it, but then you Too look at it on people. tape, like this may be true. 
Right. You know, it, it, it's where there's smoke, there's fire. I was about to say. You know, where there's mm-hmm. smoke, there's fire. You know, you get yeah. a guy like Nick Foles come in, they go to the Super Bowl, and then they saying guys don't want to play for wins. You P-T. know, so it, 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 it's just that vibe that with the guy under the hump, yeah. he, got, he, he got to be the guy that guys are feeling for. PT, you finna get so much hate mail, man. <laughs> hey, I'm ready for it. You hey, ready for it? I see him on Twitter. He ain't worried about that. Oh, oh <laughs> no, he know he, he about that action. Him on Twitter. That's why I loved it. Yeah. Oh, hey, okay. he about that that's action. how I okay. found out because I was I like, I, I, I seen a couple of them tweets. I said, oh shoot, got to get Philly Phil on the show. Yeah, you know, got to get PT on the show. <laughs> he going <laughs> hard over here. I ain't worried about that. Oh man. my, I, my bad. I thought you were gonna fold a little bit, but nah. Either way, we fold that right here, man. I'm, I'm, I'm very strategic with it. I'm gonna slice you up so respectful and politely. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna show emotions. I'm not gonna cuss and fuss with you. I'm just gonna politely tell you what it is. You know. Yeah. <laughs> PT said. PT said. I ain't scared of you, mother. <laughs> <laughs> man, this oh, boy is the fucking shows out great, here, man. man. Yes, indeed. Y'all got anything hey, else? PT, I got it. He, he done ran through the whole damn glossary, dog. I, yeah. I am, I am <laughs> he impressed. He ran through everything. <laughs> like, I like, am like impressed. This right here, man. This dude Ooh. right here. Anyway, man, you can reach out to John Kidner to bring him on, man. Oh, most yeah, definitely, man. man. Like, no, yeah. I definitely stand up the kid, man. It's, uh, mm-hmm. it's crazy time for us right now. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Only because, man, we got so many contingencies of when we'll be able to get out and see our kids. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, yeah. he's kind of working through those logistics right now, but. As soon as he come with a game plan and things slow down like that, man, I I, I see Kit like it's a great guy, you know. And I love Kit. It, it was so yeah, it was so fun seeing stand. seeing him and Dak, man. Like mm-hmm. ooh, that, hurt they, that hurt my soul. That hurt my soul. T- a PT that hurt my soul. I wrote an article on John Kitna. I, I as soon as they were talking about possibly maybe getting him. That hurt my soul that they let him walk. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Him I mean, and Mike McCarthy it's... must bumped into each other and said, not, 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 not that. <laughs> just just from my perspective, <laughs> saying thing like with Kitna being so hands on with Dak. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Now it's like it's so many voices now because mm-hmm. McCarthy is, a, is he's hands on with his quarterback. Oh. Okay. You know, and then Kellen being an OC. You know, so it's like ah man, too you know, you don't want too many hands on him. Too many hands on him. You know, too many voices. Mm-hmm. You know, but like I said, Kit. Kid, kid is excited. Man, kid is a high school guy. That that that's his passion. Yeah. So his passion is high yeah. school ball. And when he came back, I mean, he was coming back for Jason Garrett. You know that that's just the effect that Garrett has on guys. That when Garrett called, he answered. Yeah, and uh, he did a hell of a job with Dak, man. Yeah. I got yeah, a kind yeah. of a wild card question here. I'm not yeah. sure if you would know about it, but uh, one of the uh, commenters, my man Lunatic, he said, do you know why New England blocks so many punts every year? Because I know you're a special teams oh, coach. 100% I do. 100%. Why they, you know, the one, one, they, they got the dudes to do it. You know, like certain organizations have special teams guys. And some, Slater. Some of the value special teams. Exactly. You know, so you got a 13-year vet that's there now just all the fame to play special teams. Special teams <laughs> you know, and it's I'm going to put my best guy on your worst guy and we're going to exploit him you know so those are the things like i even heard stories about when four baths came about with slater like slater he don't even go to practice he go to special team practice and he's a special teams guy he know he's there to play special he worked with the specialist you know so therefore you know you have those they they have a group of guys that are just true special teams players that's what you're here for you grind at it and you get it done so I just think they got that that veteran leadership and those true veteran and Pro Bowl guys as special teams player on their squad. And that's why they're able to be productive and block so many punts and be successful. On that. There you, there it, you it, have it's it. the dudes that they have. There, there you have it, Lunatic. Yeah, he been asking that question for the last like twenty minutes. He said, I, mean, I got to it, know. It, it, yeah, because if you look at it with us in Dallas, man, we're, uh, our, spe- our punt team was changing every week. You know, guys going down have to change or this guy's not up. And this hey, guy's here. And your and punter was hurt. This, and now it's like, punter's hurt. Like, well, this guy may not be up to speak. Well, the guy that's up to now, he's starting. So now we can't mm-hmm. play him on special team because he's starting now. You know, so those are all the different nuances that go into being yeah, a special team coach. Like you, yeah. Sometimes you don't know your roster until Sunday at 3 o'clock, and this may be a night game. And you don't even know who the guys you got that's going to go out there with. Mm-hmm. You know, so that that's the nuances of being a special team coach and knowing, man, I don't even know the guys I'm going to have because different roster moves. Or as you in New England, and it's like, okay, cool. This is your core guys. This is the guys you're gonna rock with. These See, are guys that know day in and day out they're going to go play special teams. 
You, so you hear that lunatic because he says, so why doesn't other teams do it? But to me, it sounds like you're saying in New England, no. they literally they spe- they say, this is a, what a you're department. here for. Yeah. No, this is, they have nothing a else. department. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. in, yeah. We're yeah. in yeah. Dallas. Personnel. We're asking the, de- not even Devin Smith, but we're asking the fifth wide receiver to say, right. hey, we need you to know the offense, but you got to go be a gunner also on special teams. Yeah. Where right. Slater right. wasn't even yeah. learning the offense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Slater was just a special teams demon, so he understood that. Slater wasn't worried about going through his offensive playbook. Like all he was worried about is special team playbook. And it's just what you value, you know? Mm-hmm. So again, when McCarthy came in, he spoke on what he valued. So he went and got a special teams coach. Oh, man, you speak so that yes. value that, you know? So it, yes. it, it, it's about just having your guys, you know, and knowing who your core group of guys going to be. Like we had like, it, and that's why I say I'm glad I'm grateful for Witten, because if Witten wouldn't have been there, we don't have Blake Jarvis, who was a core special teams guy. He was our tackle on punt team. You know, he was on kickoff mm-hmm. return team. He was a guy that helped us. We don't have him. Or you get Tony Pollard, and now the offense loves him now, and they're telling us, well, you know, I don't know about returning kicks now, because, you know, he's he, <laughs> you know, he looking good on offense. So as, as a special team, those, those, those are the battles you fight. So everybody yeah. says, oh, we want, we want more Tony Pollard. So if he getting more snaps on offense, guess where you put him off of? Special okay, team. Special team. You know? Y'all listen. <laughs> Y'all listen in the chat over there. Man, you dropping know? all types of nuggets, man. You know, so, so, dropping so that, bombs like Hiroshima. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, that, that's the good battle. stuff. You know, again, like when your special team guys start producing, that's what happened now. They leave you. You know, and they go yeah. to offensive defense. You know, like mentioned got Jeff Heath. Let's, let's talk about Heath. Yeah, he was like, let's talk about Heath. Let's every, talk about him then. <laughs> every, everybody talk about, oh, Dallas special team ain't been really good. Guess when they, guess when they was good? When Jeff. Heath was on there. Yeah. Kayvon. When he started balling mm-hmm. out, guess what happened to Heath? Hey, son, mm-hmm. come on over here and play defense for us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't, don't worry about special team. Before Heath, you got Barry Church. Yeah. Nope, Barry yeah. Church was a yeah, Barry Church was a dog a special, on the special team. Special team guy. Mm-hmm. Guess what now? Now you're on defense now. You know, we're far. Because I remember that's where he made his mark. Exactly. Yeah. In New England, you got Slater. Slater ain't That's catching it. no balls. He won't he won't worry about catching nothing for Brady. <laughs> nothing. No Cram. Cord- Cordell Patterson. You know, he knows his job mm. is to go return kicks. And they may right. put me on offense every now and then and give me a jet sweep. But when I walk mm. in this league with the Vikings, I'm returning kicks. kicks and that's it. Yeah. You know, in Chicago, you got Cohen. Cohen ain't worried about nothing on offense. Pump kick me the ball. And I'm gonna mm. go play. You know, Facts. so that, that's one of the things when people knock, oh, why are not good special teams? You know, like you lose your guys, you know, you lose because when you're in, in different organizations, you know, when your guys start playing well, they move on from special teams to offensive defense. Man, y'all hear this, man? This this is some great this one. stuff, man. Great stuff, and they love you in the comments, by the way. They love Absolutely that. loving this, man. Absolutely loving this. But yeah, that, that that's the last question I wanted to throw at you from the wild card question in the, in the comments. They were really asking about special teams. But um, go right on ahead, uh, James. Oh, I was just gonna say, uh, if y'all ain't got nothing else, we gonna. Uh, yeah, we done kept. You, you, uh, you got anything else? Man. Nah, nah. I was gonna squeeze them out, out some more information about this West Coast offense it's philosophy, but you guys probably already touched on it, right? We, we, we touched on a little squeeze. bit of the, yes. the offense, squeeze. but not actually the West Coast. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You can but squeeze. You think we're gonna run West Coast, or we, what? We gonna do the variations of Kellen Moore's offense? Uh, I, I think it'll be. I think it'll definitely be a mixture, only because McCarthy loves what Kellen is doing. Mm-hmm. However, McCarthy loves what McCarthy does. You know, <laughs> so that's one. That's one thing about coaches. You know, everybody talk about egos. There's nothing wrong with an ego. Bring your ego because your ego is who, who you are, and makes you who you good at what you do. But it's only when your ego starts to uh, affect the team in a negative way, you know, uh, that is bad. But I think that uh, McCarthy and Kellen, because Kellen, Kellen is a sponge. As mm-hmm. much as Kellen knows, Kellen is still a really good listener. You know, so with Kellen being able to sit down and him McCarthy getting together and figuring out what they want to do for what's best in offense. And the, the, the great thing about it is they got the tools to build whatever kind of house they want to build. Oh, my goodness. You know, yeah. so yeah, what, 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 whatever way they want to go about, great it, they analogy. Can go about it, you know, and it's from it's from even bringing in the, the next the other Blake at the tight end spot. Now we got a true mm-hmm. why a guy that can put his hand in the ground. Yep. Dalton Schultz, he's still got to be our Dalton Schultz. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. still a dominant wide that can put his hand in the ground and go block. You know, yeah, so he can those block his ass that, what, 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 I mean, it's whatever McCarthy and Kellen wants to get done, they can get done. You know, this, but, this, this, this O-line going to do zone blocking or what do you think they're going to do? 
um, that I don't know because I, I don't I don't know the offensive line coach. Okay. You yeah. know, Phil one Bobby. thing one, one, Phil one thing about O line is they're gonna mm-hmm. they're gonna favor who their coach is. You know, and I I don't know I'm not familiar with the offensive line coach what he wants to do. But one thing about spots. even asking what scheme you want to do is. Like I was telling them it can be stressful because you have so many things. So you can go out there and try to do all these different things and not be good at any of them. So uh-huh. Dallas got to figure out what they're good at. Of course, everybody wants to see 60 points scored, you know, True. but at the same time, we got to figure out what's our identity, you know, and that's going to be the first thing. And I, and I firmly believe that our identity is going to be to run the ball. I think McCarthy is excited because McCarthy never had a running back. That's like this, like, that's, nope. what, that's you know? what James Jones said. That's what he's been saying. He's been, <laughs> yeah. I've been really listening to Jones, and you know he played with him, and he kept on saying, everybody keep on saying, McCarthy likes to throw the ball, and he's been staunchly putting his hand on the table, saying, "Listen, <laughs> we ran the shit out of Eddie Lacy." <laughs> yeah. He said we were running 30, 35 yeah. times. He said I was coming back to the huddle, saying, "If y'all hand this ball off one more time to this dude, I'm going out to huddle." He said that's how much they ran the ball, yeah. and he said, yeah. and he ain't never had a Zeke. Yeah. So if he yeah. had that with Lacy, what the hell he gonna do with Zeke and Pollard? Right, 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 right. Hey, hey you uh-huh. gotta put it in Jamae's Ola Wale too, man. Yeah, I, I think. <laughs> I, I think Mays to get his. I want Mays to get touched on offenses, but I was telling you guys about those true teamers. Mm-hmm. I see Mays as being a true teamer now, mm. and and he mm. can be that now. You know, he can still have his patches on the offense, but I think he can be a true teamer. I think he's gonna excel. Probably be real in, good with, with Jones. Cause, you know, cause because he gets he's drugged by Cowboy Nation. Everybody like, oh, he can't catch. He dropped that he ball. I think this. he can catch. He's though. missing out on blocks. I think he can catch. I think he can hey, do Jamaze, everything. Jamaze, Jamaze, Jamaze is one of the most athletic fullbacks. Who ran like a four four or something crazy? My <laughs> thing about it is, mm-hmm. you 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 don't. You're not on year eight being just an average guy at fullback. Come on now. No one even has fullback now. You know, and this guy's going on year eight at fullback. Mm-hmm. You know, so so that 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 speaks volume of what he brings to the table. You know, was he always used right? No, that's on us. Coaching staff will take that. When I tell you this this, this kid got he got tools, Ooh, you know, and y'all listen, y'all said, listen. You know, he he got tools. He's he's a great guy on special teams. You know, he's a four-phase guy. He's a, a linebacker running like a running back, tackling like a running back. You know, so those guys are hard to come by. Yeah. You know, it's hard to come by those 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 guys that can do all of that. You know, so he and he's a guy that can line up at the F position, a motion back in the backfield. He's athletic enough, he's smart enough to do all those things. So I'm now it's just on the coaching staff to get where he needs to get to. Low man, I'm ready to hit something now. Man, I'm ready to watch some football. Man. My, my bro wanted to know, um, yeah. What's your most memorable thing? Most memorable thing about Coach Skip Pete uh, during your time playing with him? Oh man, the uh, dinners at his uh, at his house, you know. Uh, and I tell you, like you can ask players about anything about memorable things, and I guarantee they'll never tell you anything that. Happened. Well, you can't, yeah, you probably football can't football. tell. Yeah, yeah, you know, but but just PG, just just dinners PG. at his house, man, and just and just seeing those guys outside of the hash, you know, outside of the hash and outside of the facility just seeing how down to earth they are and just how they care about their players, you know? So just things that Skip would instill in us, man, how he'd be down to earth, how he opened his house up to us just for meals and things like that. And his crazy wife, <laughs> you know, but just <laughs> yeah. his, 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 his corn family, man. So that would be my mo- most memorable thing is that him taking the time to reach us outside of the hashes, you know, and stand mm-hmm. true to us. You know, that's the biggest thing that Anybody that can speak on the coach is how true that coach to his room. And one thing about Skip Pete, man, he he was true to his room, 100. Yeah. percent From his background, starting off as a wide receivers coach, and then ultimately be like a, a football coach as it relates to running the ball. I think that we will see more catches in the backfield. Oh, 100. percent 100. Like his, his knowledge from the game, or even from mm-hmm. sitting beside his brother, you know, Rodney at the yeah. when Rodney at the quarterback spot. Oh, the that was the game, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I think you will see more of it from Tony, you know, and then, like I said, it's all up to them just figuring out how to use TP, you know, and, and when to use TP because of course fans say, oh yeah, I just want now, 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 like, but it's so much yeah. that goes on into a game plan or a script or the flow of a game. You can't mm-hmm. just say, okay, let's just go throw, throw Tony Perrin in a slot. Like it may not be time down in distance or uh, hashes. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Oh. Yeah, good stuff. All that goes into effect of what you, what how you want to use your players, you know. And, and that's the thing about with with Tony and Kellen and McCarthy that I'm excited to see how it all comes together. Most you and me both, play boy. You and me both. Yes, all right, James. Yeah. All right. Hey, man. Well, you know what? We definitely appreciate you. Me and you gonna chop it up here for a few minutes uh, after this. I hope you got a little bit of time. I ain't gonna keep you long because I know we, been... we done kept him long. Yeah, I know he, he, <laughs> we, he, we, he we, been all long. I seen him. I seen him stretching back there. I said, "Oh, we keeping him." Right? <laughs> <laughs> he said, "He can't come back." back no, listen, okay. get over here. here. <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll, I'll get my second win. <laughs> I'll, I'll get back here I'm saying, like, hey, <laughs> PT uh, might need a damn podcast because you, you need one. <laughs> listen, no, we good. can go. We can go. We can go for hours and on hours. We're talking all night. We have guests. You know, first time yeah, coming through, we don't want to make yeah, you. Yeah, yeah I mean, we gotta well, chill out. Depression. Yeah. Hey, when, 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 Blame me though. Me, whenever y'all need me, I'm here, man. Right. Blame me. Yes. So we, so we yes. can talk games. You know. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, we definitely gonna need you like after the game and stuff. Hell like yeah! That. So don't be like, saying that. You be like, that. don't be <laughs> saying that. Look at your phone. Be like, all right, man. All right, man. I said, I said, I said a little bit. You're doing every damn game now. <laughs> and, and, and then, like, like I told Jay, man, my, my biggest thing is when I get on here and talk, man, it, 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 it's my perspective, mm, my experience. That's why. I and I, I, I'll that. never slander anybody else to credit others. You know, exactly. I, true, I, true, I, I believe true. in giving folks their girls, flowers. Too. And crediting others, I'm not here to slant anybody else, you exactly. know. So it's not, it, it, it's a different you can credit, you can credit that and not have mm. to slam the rope. Yeah. And they no, want to know no, where so, they can find yeah. you, yeah. uh, at P Town 34 on Twitter. That's all I got right now. Twitter, man, I, I gotta get my socials yeah. up. That's all you really, that's <laughs> well, all you really need, though, is Twitter when you, when you, yeah, are, you know, a player, yeah. coach, you don't need all that extra stuff. <laughs> See, that's why I say yeah. things happen for we a reason. That you may, you may, you may want to do your production game and then you got Skywalker right here. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Things can happen yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, know, these man. things can know. happen in the air. Say that that's again one know. more time. Uh, at P Tanner 34. P Tanner we, 34, y'all. Matter of fact, I'm going to put it in the comments for y'all. Matter of fact, we live on Twitter right now. I'm going to send you this, uh, I'm going to tag you in this uh, post right quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, appreciate you, man. All right, yeah, man. Yeah, we yes, definitely sir. appreciate you coming on here, man. Taking out your time, doing all that, and like I said, we're gonna chop it up for a few. But man, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I love just the energy and the yeah, realness oh and the goodness. openness. And he could have kept going. I mean, you know, we, 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 we kicking we, you out now. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody we bring on here, we we keep it real. Like we yeah. just try to keep it so That's real and funky for the people that follow mm -hmm. us and support us. We don't want to come in and bring on the BS. You know what I'm right, saying? We want right, to shoot right. it straight from the hip, and that's what, the type of people we like to bring. And you just really killed it today. And I just oh got, my gosh! I mean, uh, mad, we've mad had guys on here, but but you, I, I'm impressed. I'm just saying, I'm impressed because right. normally, like I said, our shows we can go and we can go, but when there's guests, I we try to you know have some time. But you were going for us, and you were insightful. You were you. You ain't holding yes, your jabs back, and you kept it a bean. And that's well, bean where I'm from, mean you kept it a hundred. I don't know if you, yeah, yeah. man, all that stuff. <laughs> he was saying like, John. I'm like, what's the John? They don't like you my know, lingo, the fam. They don't yeah, like yeah, my yeah. East Coast lingo, dog. They don't like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I appreciate you, man, and I appreciate everyone that came through in the chat. They really enjoyed you, and make sure yes, you sir. follow him on yeah. Twitter. Yes. At PT or P Tanner. Yeah, P Tanner thirty four. P Tanner thirty four. Thank you guys for joining the show. I'm going to upload this on the podcast. If you missed the first half, run it back. This was some great stuff. He dropped a lot of, nu nu lot of nuggets, y'all. A lot of nuggets. Thank yeah. you, Philip. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.